Mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, veuillez accueillir, please welcome Kochakorn Boracom. It was no coincidence that I am a landscape architect from Bangkok. As a child, I grew up in the row house next to the busy road, always filled with heavy traffic. And in front of my house, there was a parking lot. And that was my playground. The only living creature I would find and have fun with were these sneaky little plants try to go through the crack of the concrete pavement. My favorite game with friends was to dig the bigger and the bigger hole through this crack to let these little plants creep out, sneak out more and more. And yes, landscape architecture gives me the opportunity to continue my cracking ambition to let to connect this concrete land back to nature. Bangkok is a water city. Here, you can see the system of the canal and its urbanization growing in every direction over the past century, shifting from porous agricultural land, the land that can breathe, and absorb water to a concrete jungle. The nowness reality of Bangkok is a city of 15 million people living, working, and commuting on top of this shifting muddy river delta. Bangkok is sinking more than one centimeters per year. But that is four times faster than the rate of predicted sea level rise. And we could be below sea level by 2030, which will be here too soon. Before Thais, my people, we were adapted and interwoven with the cycle of the wet and dry season and you could call us amphibious. We, lo we live both on land and on water. We were adapted to both. And flooding was a happy event when the water fertilized our land. But now, our relationship with flooding and water has forever changed. This is how it looked like after 15 minutes of rainfall. The land has no room for water. It has lost its absorbent capacity. And with the heavy rain and flood, this is what happened. Nothing much, just crocodile on the street. And I would never thought of my childhood fun time, like boat paddling in the flood water would later be a signal of disaster. 2011, Thailand was hit by the most damaging and the most expensive flood disaster in our history. Oops, sorry. Here you can see the scale of the flood in the center of the image compared to the scale of Bangkok outlined here in yellow. The water was overflowing from the north, making its way across several provinces. And if we closely pay attention more, you will see how we block the water and reroute the, the direction of the flood and sacrifice many upstream provinces 
just to keep Bangkok from getting wet. Millions of my people, including myself and my family, were displaced and homeless. Some have to escape the city. Many were terrified of losing their home, so they stayed back in the flood with no electricity and clean water. All mode of transportation was shut down. For me, this flood reflects clearly that our modern infrastructure, especially our notion of fighting flood with the concrete, had made us extremely vulnerable to the climate uncertainty. But at the heart of this disaster, I found my calling. I cannot just sit and wait as my city continues to sink. This city needed me, and I have ability to fix this problem. Six years ago, my team and I won the design competition for Shula Longon Centenary Park. This is the mission of the first university in Thailand to give this precious piece of land to celebrate its 100th anniversary and giving this land as a public park. Having a park might sound very normal here and in many other countries, but not in Bangkok, which has one of the lowest public space per capita among mega city in Asia. Our projects become the first public park in 30 years in central Thailand. The 11 acre parks, the big green crack at the heart of the city opened just last year. Through the design process, we convince and never give up to convince that this park is not just for recreation or city beautification. It must help the city deal with water. It must help the city confront climate change. And here is how it works. Bangkok is a flat city, so we harness the power of gravity by inclining the whole park to collect every drop of rain. The rain is big thing in my country. When it's rain, it's like pouring. And from the gravity force, pull down the runoff and rain from the highest point to the lowest point. This park has three main elements that work as one system. First, the green roof. This is the biggest green roof in Thailand with rainwater tanks and museum underneath. On top of this park, you can enjoy the skyline of Bangkok, which is normally we have to pay so much money to go up and see because we are a flat city. From the green roof, the water then falls through to wetlands with cascading ponds and small dams with native water plants that help clean and filter water. These wetlands create the hidden oasis for children. And this is not a common experience for kids who are growing in Bangkok. This is a chance for them to reconnect to nature and play with water once again. At the lower end, there are this retention pond, which collect all of the water. At this pond, there are water bikes, and people can help paddling and exercise to help clean water. So that action become part of the park water system. When life gives you flood, you have fun with the water. <laughs> this inclined park creates rooms for people and room for water, which is exactly what we need. 
This is an amphibious design. This park is not about getting rid of water. It's about creating a way how to live with it. And not a single drop of rain is wasted in this park. This park can hold and collect one million gallons of water. Centenary Park is just the first big green crack. And no, it didn't stop me from making an even bigger one. At Thomasat University, the biggest green roof in any academic campus yet in Southeast Asia. This green roof is designed by mimicking the rice terraces that help slow down the runoff. Normal architecture uses leave the rain and the runoff to the public sewage that already overwhelmed during the rain. So with this design structure, we detour the route of the water. And by doing that, we can grow the food for the campus. Normal concrete rooftop create heat and create us urban heat island. But with the urban farming on top of it, it's helped reduce energy, make our city more cool, and the generation Y can become a farmer right downtown. Another possibility of greening my concrete city is reworking with this abandoned infrastructure. Yes, abandoned. 30 years ago, this structure was supposed to be the route for the skyline to across the river of Chao Phaya. But with the change of politics, left us with this concrete monument of useless. For 30 years, it has been there. And trust me, there are more in my city. So four years ago, my team and I and, this, and Urban Design and the community, we redesign and give the purpose of redesigning this infrastructure into the Green Pedersen Bridge. And I am very excited because last month, the groundbreaking ceremony just happened, which means a year and a half from now, this project would be complete. Thank you. And I would love to welcome everyone here to visit my city and enjoy this new landmark. We also working with the unused helipad on top of the biggest government hospital and turn into the biggest healing garden in Thailand. This rain garden, of course, help save the energy from the building. And especially, this hospital serves 50 million people per day, the patient in this building. So this area, the wasted area in this building help create the healing environment for the staff and the patients. Our work has not finished when the projects are. We also use landscape architect design to serve the vulnerable community from climate impact along the coastline and the flood canal. We are co-creating the solution with them and repurpose to the government to use the money and the budget more wisely and teach them the simple solution that they can let 
built upon themselves. This is the example of how they will see what the new housing would look like. This also includes re restoration of the mangrove. Save the existing canal along the city canal before it's been cut down. I'm very sad, but this is the first thing when construction guys go to the site, they cut the trees. And redesign all this pocket park to help contain the rainwater. A simple solution like install the rainwater tank in their home. It is equally important to bring along the new generation of built design environment to make them understand the inequity of the climate impact that they can make the difference in their own city. Severe flooding is our new normal. And with every breath we take, major Delta cities across the globe London, New York, New Orleans, Los Angeles, Tokyo, Shanghai are sinking. And especially the cities in Southeast Asia, the region most exposed to the coastline at extreme risk. This is the fast sinking city in the world. Anyone want to make a guess? Yes. No? <laughs> the what? Um, no, in Southeast Asia. But thank you. Yeah. Bangladesh also had the same problem of sinking city. This is Jakarta, the capital city of Indonesia. And with the unsolvable circumstance, they plan on moving their capital and my hometown can be next if we not adapt quickly enough. Living in the sinking city, every rainfall is the wake-up call. If we continue the way we are now, the similar catastrophe will definitely happen again and again. Creating a park is just one solution. Our awareness of climate change means we, 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 in every profession we are working on, are obligated to make this solution together. R rising the awareness creates more anxiety and fear are not going to save us from this crisis, we need your action, and it has to be continuous action. And in able to work on this, to tackle this problem together, there is one thing, one word, that I would love to share with you. One word that I always keep in mind, that word is Tang Zai. Tang Zai, literal translation in my language is Tang is firmly stand. And for Jai means heart. Firmly stand your heart at your goal. In my language, when you want to do something, you put tang zai in front of your word, so your heart will be with your action. No matter how rough the path, how big the crack, you push to your goal because that's where your heart is. And yes, Thailand is home. This land is my only home. And that is where I firmly 
stand my heart? Where do you stand yours? Thank you.